having some problems. And I'm going to talk to you today a little bit about uh, EGA. Um, let me share my screen. Oops, wait, hang on. Mm -hmm, sorry, I've never done this before. So I wait, wait, Emma, how do I do it? <laughs> I <wanna> share my screen. <laughs> I literally put this together in like 15 minutes. <laughs> so um, give it to me. I'll run it for you. Oh, OK. Wait, you have the link. It's in, it's I, in I do have the link, don't I? Yeah. Right. Thank you so much. I'll this is Emma, there. everybody. You should know her from the last panel that we did. Um, we did the Salty Stories to Tell in the Dark Horror Story Edition, or the Halloween Edition, uh, at Grammarie. And all you get to see me embarrass myself, which is perfect. But we're here to have fun, so that's what matters. Okay, so Emma's pulling up my uh, slides, and then I'm going to show them to you. see sorry everybody we're having a good time we're hanging out oh there we go perfect okay okay so this is elegant gothic lolita aristocrat vampire romance or a hastily done introduction to ega fashion uh so what is ega uh ega stands for elegant gothic aristocrat it's sort of a grown up or more mature version of EGL or Lolita. Um, and it's inspired by the garments of the 19th century European aristocracy. So it's sort of like if you were to take a little bit of the slice of like the very Victorian inspired Lolita stuff and then sort of change the silhouette up. Um, and traditionally it is fairly Gothic. Um, there are men's and women's styles too, which is interesting. So instead of just being like Lolita and boy style, there are men's uh, clothing menswear as part of the EGL umbrella. Um, an EGA was a term coined by Mana, as, as was EGL. Um, so some brands that do EGA are Bon Ben Moitier, uh, Atelier Pierrot, Atelier Boz, uh, Cheglet, and a Biotage. So on the left there, you see a piece by Pierrot, and then on the right, there's a piece by Moitier. Um, as you can see, there's menswear. Uh, it's a super decadent velvet coat. Uh, and I love it. It's gorgeous. Or my meme if you're Spencer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I think a bunch of us are going to be able to twin that dress now. Uh, it's gorgeous. I actually wore that. That's what I wore in the fashion line. Um, so it's, it's fantastic. It's amazing. All right, let's see. Next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, silhouette. So the silhouette is pretty different from Lolita. I would say it's one of the major things that differentiates it from like EGL. Um, so the skirts are typically long, full skirts. They're T-length or longer. Um, and sometimes you see mermaid skirts, which is what you see on the right there. There's a mermaid skirt from Boz. I own that one. It's amazing. It makes my butt look great. I recommend it. Uh, I want to see more people wearing mermaid skirts. Um, uh, something else that you see are skirts that gather and uh, puzzle, excuse me, similar to the skirt on the last slide. Um, and you also see petticoats that do the same, more like she's glit. I love it. Thank you, Moni. Um, and you also see skirts that have that kind of telltale um, lump in the back, which is which comes from the petticoat. Um, it's super fun. I love that silhouette. And something else is that corsets are really common. So you might see a more a more nipped in um, waist because people will wear corsets. Next slide, please. All right, so fabrics. Typically, they're very decadent, rich, and, and polished and posh. Um, this is definitely supposed to be a fashion that looks, um, it's supposed to look historically expensive. It's not supposed to look expensive to the modern eye necessarily, but it is supposed to be um, something based off of what the aristocracy might have worn in the 19th century. So things like suiting, velvet, chiffon, things that just, feel very um, just rich and decadent and beautiful and things that, um, depending on the mood that you're going for, if you're looking at something that's more romantic, you're going to see more lace and chiffon and layers. And if you're looking at something a little more straight laced, um, maybe like something like Boz does with their very tailored uh, coats and outerwear, you're going you're gonna to be looking more at like suiting and stuff like that. 
And Jacquard, yes. Oh my goodness, I totally forgot that. Next slide, please. All right, so the garments. This is something that is also sort of different from Lolita. Um, there's longer skirts, uh, typically long sleeve blouses. I've seen the EGA coordinates with short sleeve blouses or with just like spaghetti strap tank top. Um, but typically you're, you're looking at a longer sleeve. Um, oh yeah, it's that corset that Emma has. That's actually why I put that there because I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh, it's the Vietage corset. It's really cute. Um, a lot of times you're looking at outerwear, so jackets and blazers. Uh, the photo on the left, there's an example of two of the Rolando coats from Boz. I think those are the velvet ones. It's kind of hard to tell from the picture, but I think those are both velvet. I really, I have one, I have one of the, the like standards or suiting material ones, but I want a jacquard one, the velvet one. They're so gorgeous. Uh, let's see, corsets. Corsets are also a thing that appear in EGA. So you're looking at potentially a more tucked in or nipped in waist. Yeah, you, you get to squish your guts. It's great. Um, and you do sometimes see corsets with Lolita, but historically, sometimes people discourage them historically being within the historical timeline of like Lolita fashion. Um, but they're fairly common with EGA. And then you're also gonna see more full-size hats. You do still see in old GLBs, for example, or in old magazine scans, you're gonna see little, you know, like the small top hats and stuff, but uh, more typically you see like a large, a large full-size hat. Next slide, please. Oh, okay, well, that's the end. <laughs> um, I got a bunch of pictures from the FEI Lolita article about um, about EGA, and I think that's a pretty good uh, rundown. Are EGA color palettes mostly black and jewel tone, or do you see other colors like pastels? I have seen pastels. I see um, one in particular, the Conoco shop, uh, the people that run that. I've seen them do pastel EGA, and it's beautiful. It is so decadent, and it's so gorgeous. Uh, but typically black and jewel tones, but I would love to see someone bust out like a pastel mermaid skirt coordinate. Like I would die happy. Wait, I'm going to add Emma to the stream so we can just talk about stuff and then hello. Hey there. Welcome. Um, we should answer questions from the audience. If people have other questions about goth stuff or EGA stuff or Moitié stuff or Boz stuff. I'm just here barefaced and all ready to go. Compliment your goblet. Oh um, my. I can just so. interview about EGA stuff. Just come up with questions on the fly. Um, oh, yeah. So you personally, I know, didn't wear EGA forever. This hasn't been a forever thing. It's fairly new because you're trying to cut your wardrobe down. Mm -hmm. um, is it because you're getting older like Ooh. the rest of us and we're like, we can't wear prints because it's just too much, but that's not true. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Or is it just you're really being driven towards the darker side of things? It's kind of both. So like when I was a teenager, I was really into the like if you saw my look in the fashion walk, it was this very like wake me up, well, yeah, well, like <laughs> evanescence, flowing skirt, just you know, really over the top dramatic. And uh, oh yes, okay, good, I'm glad. Um, and so that was like what I was really into in high school. So it's kind of a return to that. Um, but it's also a bit of when I go out, I find it easier to be perceived as a grown woman, as an adult um, in my, I guess I'm in my late twenties now. Um, dang. So, <laughs> so like I said, Big the mood, dang. Dang. Um, so I like to be perceived that way. And I tend to dress in ways that influence others' perspectives of me, or maybe what I want them to think about me to an extent. Um, and so EGA I find is a little bit more in line with how I want to feel and how I want to be perceived, just a little bit more mature, um, polished, clean. Like I don't go out in what I wore in the fashion walk, but um, longer silhouettes, more rich fabrics. So I live in a very cold climate, so I can do that here. Um, yeah, it just feels a little bit more um, 
sophisticated, I guess. Not that Lolita isn't or that it should be, <laughs> but that's how I want to feel. So. Yeah. Uh, personally, I also do not want to be perceived. Please do not. God, me, especially that's right now. Ah. Such a mood. Oh, that's well. Oh, what is EGA makeup like? What oh, that's makeup? a good question. I don't blow up <laughs> my spot. I'm not going to blow up your spot. <laughs> Emma's doing a makeup panel later. So I would suggest tuning into that. Um, that's going to be really great. Um, I would say historically, if you're looking at like older um, pictures of EGA from like old magazines, you're going to be seeing things that are similar to what Lolita makeup was at the time, but a little bit darker. Um, and I think it continues to mirror that um, relationship. I think I, I think EGA makeup now, Lolita makeup now is heavier. EGA makeup now is heavier. So I would say they're almost interchangeable. I personally like to do a nice dark, um, a nice dark look. I always wear like a dark lip, uh, and just simple eye makeup. I mean, it's simple for me. I don't know if it's simple for everybody else. Uh, certainly not for somebody like Emma. <laughs> yeah, I'd say. Or wait, no, no, sorry. To our panel, and about two and a half hours from now, I will be touching upon just all kinds of EGL makeup in general, specifically gothic, because that's all I do, and how Western makeup has ruined the way I wear makeup and Lolita. So sorry about it. Ooh, I'm interested to hear about that because I find myself influenced by like Instagram makeup trends. It's hard because I have to pull back a lot of the times, but you know me, I would die if I ever forgot contouring. And like, you don't necessarily need contouring all the time, especially Correct. for a lot of Lolita looks, but yeah, I'm just like, nope, I want to look like a skeleton. So here I am just colors that don't match my face. So my, yeah, I totally feel that. My opinion is you do whatever the hell you want because it's fashion and it's fun. Um, oh, hair, same as EGL or more grown up Victorian. I... I wouldn't do the more whimsical hairstyles for EGA. Um, so thinking about like twin tails, um, stuff like that, split wigs, like it's a little bit out of fashion now, but the more um, whimsical and more youthful looking hairstyles, I would probably avoid those. I typically, I'm really boring with my hair. I wear my hair down. Sometimes I wear a half wig and it's curly. That's about all I do. It's about as far as it goes. You can also um, look at like examples of like Mana back in the day had the kind of twin tails, but they were teased more. I feel like those also work if you want to have yeah. like a little bit extra or OTT. That's a good point. Uh, are there any bl brands, brands that you know of with an aesthetic similar to Shiglet, but with larger sizing? Um, the best EGA and EGL brand, I would say, possibly for sizing is Piero. Um, they don't quite do what... Shiglet does with the clean lines and the really highly tailored things, but uh, Piero has excellent sizing. They're really responsive to the Western market and to what we need. Um, I would recommend checking them out. Like if you like the longer silhouettes, if you like more um, swishy, romantic, gothy things, I would absolutely like they have great stuff. They are a bit more forgiving in terms of sizing uh unless you're somebody who's under five feet and just says screw it i will drag my dress on the floor you get it tailored i'm excited for that bustle dress to come in and me to put it on and be like wow this is not fit me <laughs> we can both wear pleasers with our, our dresses and then we'll just I, apparently seven inch heels not six or seven long. i have the um, same ones for seven i have a question that would probably yeah. be fun um so I personally feel like Gothic Lolita is really easy to get into, but that might just be because I grew up as an emo kid. Um, is there a brand in particular, if somebody's like, I have no idea what I'm doing, I really want to get into Gothic Lolita, what brand would you suggest for them that is easy and has pretty much every accessory you would, could need, blouses that are good and kind of translate across other brands? Piero, again, they definitely have It's their... going to be Piero, I know you. Yeah, they have their... <laughs> own distinctive style and there are things that you can do to kind of buy into their brand look um but they have so many accessories like not just like so there's the brand atelier piero and they have a sister brand of pali lease but they also their store carries a, a ton of other brands so they they're stockists for i don't know probably a couple dozen other brands maybe um so if you're shopping from them, you can look through all the other brands' things and find um, 
basically anything that you want or need there. Um, if you were just to narrow your search to that brand exclusively, I like their stuff because it's simple, but it's not too, it's not so simple that it's difficult to coordinate. You can dress a lot of things up or dress them down depending on how casual you want to be or how OTT you want to be. Correct. I think that tool OP, I'm telling you, you can dress that down and dress that up. I oh, they have, that. they have beautiful, beautiful dresses. Um, Cause sometimes if something's really simple, it's difficult to work with. Like if you don't have extra colors in the palette to work with, if you don't have extra textures or, you know. Accessories. Accessories, yeah. Figuring out four years later after I started wearing Lolita, I like just neglected to buy a lot of accessories. I have very few blouses, very few socks. And then 2020 was just, let's make up for lost time and buy a bunch of socks. Um, speaking I've been of boredom socks, shopping, so. Boredom shopping. I feel personally that a lot of the time, because I'm also super short, when I wear EGL, it just feels like I don't have a lot of options for socks because it's like the same three socks every single time, despite having so many now. Um, I don't. I just, I don't, I'm not going anywhere with this. I just want to know your hot take on socks. And you, My socks? Everything is just so long a lot of the time that like, I feel yeah. like you just wear crew socks and just get away I legitimately, <laughs> I wear plain black over the knee socks. Every single time I wear something. And, well, especially because I tend to wear boots. And so the boots cover like everything. Like the boots go up to my knees most of the time. Um, and so they're covering a lot of what you would see on the sock. So between the long skirt and the boot, um, you're not going to see the socks. So I, I just wear like a kind of ratty old pair of, <laughs> of black, uh, over the knee socks and it works out. I have hot footwear takes though. And my hot footwear take is do whatever you want. Um, <laughs> gonna that's wear colorful socks underneath mine. Yeah, absolutely. Wear colorful socks underneath. Uh, in my fashion walk video, I wore Doc Martens underneath. They didn't quite go with it, but it was comfy and it protected my feet from the snow. Oh, what is my favorite indie designer for EGA? And are there any other non-EGA shops that you can wear as EGA? I mean, Aria's in chat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Might as well plug Lilith at Adalia real quick. Yeah, absolutely. I would pre recommend... You can drop your link if you would like to, or somebody, one of our mods. Yeah, please. Especially because um, their stuff is so decadent like i don't know how else to describe it other than just it's just rich and it feels royal and it feels um just luxurious in a historical way it's very it's very fun um other indie brands i wear i do declare a lot as ega um so i definitely coordinate it in a way that's a little bit more in line with j fashion styles and i would say that kind of puts me more in the ega camp as opposed to the lolita camp um yeah. I love, I have, I'm looking at my vast collection of I Do Declare. I have a lot of her, I have a lot of her stuff because it's so comfortable. Only a little bit. I wasn't going to say anything, but. There's pockets and it's, a lot of it's linen, so I can throw it in the wash after going to the Ren Fair or wherever I've gone and I just eat it and it's fantastic. It's great. Um, Conoco, which might be a good segue to, uh, oh, where wow. are your favorite places to get hats? Because I know you like hats. I like hats. I literally only wear hats. This one's from Sweet Mildred. Um, I love Sweet Mildred. I have a lot of her stuff in my wardrobe. Like she's like the backbone of my wardrobe where there's a lot of like critical pieces. And I'm like, if I didn't have this. So there's a lot of stuff from her that I love. Um, Conoco Shop. I have um, Fairy fairy Tale Bird, Bird Fairy Tale. This is embarrassing. I can't remember the name, but I have... Um, Mm, there's a hat right there. It's like a little Victorian hat with these beautiful uh, ties that I think look really great and are really fun. Um, oh yeah, hats by Isis Starla. She has really gorgeous hats. Um, who else? I want one of Apatico's hats. Um, yeah, I know. I've been eyeballing those two. I have one from, actually, I do declare very, very, very once in a blue moon. Very bird hat. tail, that's what it is. Thank you. So... That's a, that's a hat that I, yeah, actually they do um, Puritan hats more regularly than the straw hats. And then the witch brim hat is something that I do declare does as well. I want one of those. I, I think there's actually one on Lace Market right now. So someone, I should just someone go get it. Mine. I'm like, I don't think I'll ever wear it. 
Oh, I will purchase it from you. I'll just show up at your house when it's legal again, and I can just go ahead and do that. Um, uh, what brand of and color of lipstick are you wearing? It looks. Like I'm wearing the Anastasia Beverly Hills liquid in. I think this is trust issues. I was wearing poet earlier, and then I changed my outfit to do this panel, <laughs> um, and then I put on trust issues, which is like the, their deepest purple. I like that you changed from wearing gothic Lolita to gothic Lolita, like. But it's like, like it's when a totally I switch different out of mood. sweatpants into pajamas when I'm working during the week. I'm like, well, time to put my pajamas on. It's past five o'clock. It was a totally like different mood. I was wearing very like traditional Lolita Lolita. I was wearing Alice in the Pirates. I think it was like Rosie Knight oh, yeah. Masquerade, okay. which is a very like Lolita look. I'm like, okay, like I should probably wear some Piero, which is what I'm let's see if I can show off my corner. I'm not wearing a petticoat, so just full disclosure. <gasps> Oh, this brooch is also Sweet Hildred too. So go check out her shop. Her stuff is fantastic. I love it. Um, this is a um, dress in Piero. I bought it at their fashion show. I bought it off of one of their models. I keep watching to see if they'll release it. And I'm I, mad. I've never, I think it might, it could be a sample. I don't know. I've never actually seen it anywhere, uh, but I love it. I'm wearing a harness with a ribbon on it. I think I actually dropped this in the chat earlier for one of the other panels. Um, this is the Clara Ribbon Harness from Apatico. It's got gold hardware on it, which I love. Then I'm wearing, what else am I wearing? Um, oh, I'm wearing this like lace bolero thing from Killstar. Just super fun and, and swishy. Uh, yeah, so, and then I just have, so I do declare packages her stuff with ribbons around the packaging. Oh, it's Jess, hello. <laughs> it's invading, I love that. <laughs> Basically who has access to this channel and can just show up on that. Mm, shoes. Well, Sarah oh, loves shoes. You're just gonna. Shoes. All right, this is it. Okay, we can just so leave. We talk for the rest of the time about shoes. Uh, so I love to wear pleasers. Like I absolutely wear pleasers in Lolita coordinates, and I got that from Emily Dogs, who you will see later with Emma at their makeup panel. Um, what other shoes do I wear? I wear Louboutins with them because you can get use Louboutins really, really cheaply. Um, and they repair really nicely. So if you get like a trash pair, it's like under a hundred dollars to repair them and they look great. Um, um, you know who else is good? If you're looking for a little bit more like vintagey is um, American Duchess. Yeah, American Duchess. Yes, absolutely. So like Oak Tree brand. Oak Tree Farms. Like yeah. Oak Tree Farms. Mm -hmm. um, if you have tiny feet, I actually have a pair of fries that are which pointy shoes mm -hmm. um if you have tiny feet you can always go vintage yeah vintage is a True. big thing too it's really i love shoes it's hard finding shoes that fit me because i have small feet also if you want some japanese brands um or just other brands in general queen bee is pretty good for just general lolita stuff mm -hmm. you, you got hair. yosuke of course it's oh, really like just came out with shoes yes they have all oh, their shoes are so cute and um oh like tokyo bopper yeah. Um, yeah. I like. I wear the same like three pairs of shoes. Yeah. And all my the great so thing <laughs> about shoes for um, like gothic or like any kind like the more gothic and classic styles versus sweet is that you can wear like. I feel like with sweet you have to kind of wear sweet Lolita shoes. Like that's your that's kind of what you gotta do, but with I straight up hate tea parties. Like, I will <laughs> fight someone. Don't don't tell the sweets. <laughs> this is a classic panel. I They're gonna come for you <laughs> so much. Um, and was like, you, you can wear like off brand oh, yeah. shoes with like gothic Lulia and elegant gothic aristocrat looks, and it's a lot easier and it's a lot easier to find. Yeah, uh, thrifting shoes for like gothic e egl and ega way easier because there's so many black shoes out there mm -hmm. yeah. aria is saying that she likes demonia which is always they're really good yeah they're an uh, they're a subset of pleasers yes and Honestly, go to pleasers website uh they have just a bunch of really good and stuff. oh like uh winkle where are those like pointy guys winkle pickers or whatever oh yeah goth I winkle, winkle pickers if you want like a real goth that's the that's the look yeah absolutely Winkle, uh, winkle, winkle pickers. The there we go. Right. If you want to stock them during, usually during the fall season, they'll have more lace-up boots that 
you can probably make very gothic type, like look like an old hedge witch or something. That's what I like to go for. So I don't know how I found the ones that I did, but I was very lucky because it's a cowboy brand. Like you get cowboy boots from there. And I was like, oh, witch shoes. And they're my favorite. So We need to make country gothic a thing. Like that's got to happen. It is a thing, is it not? I thought country goth was a thing. Country goth is a thing. Or the peck exists. Country goth is a thing. Well, country goth is a thing, but I'm talking about like Lolita, like country Lolita sub style foot goth. Hot tips here: Winkle pickers from Zara. There you go. Oh, yeah, just hell look around. Yeah. You'll find craziest shoes in the craziest places. Country Cut. goth is just a giant cash fan. I love true. it. It's true. It's Spencer. He was he wore a country goth outfit last night. Yeehaw, Winkle pickers. No, you had your time last night. You spent way too much time on the stream. Oh, yeah. and of course, paired together with a Moitier bolo tie. I love right. it. Anyway, so now it's a country goth. Uh, you know, um, Tina has bolo ties. Or had oh, bolo yeah, ties. They're, bo they're bolo ties. Yeah. Uh, like a bolo ties from... I was going to get one, and I forgot, because I really, I really want to make gothic or country... Lolita, but goth thing. So I was going to get a bolo tie. <laughs> Old Town Road. Oh, Old Town Road, but it's Oldie Town Road. I love it. That's so good. Ye Oldie Town. <laughs> ye, ye Oldie Town. <laughs> Yeehaw. Um, so Jessica's here. We could have just bombard her with questions. Yeah, so tell us. So what is your hottest take currently for gothic fashion? Hottest take? Video? What's your current hot take? I, I don't think I understand the question. <laughs> like, there, am I supposed to have a hot takes? Oh, like a spicy, controversial. Like, do, you have, do you have a hot take right now on the matter at hand? Mm, well, I feel like I feel like um, when it comes to like defining Gothic Lolita, um, there's some people with like a really narrow like definition of what that is and I don't necessarily think that I mean it can I feel like that can be their definition of what gothic is like because obviously you have like the gothic Lolita brands where um like you're following that specific brand aesthetic but I don't necessarily think that's like the end all be all for like what gothic Lolita is because I feel like it's a very western com perspective do you know I what I mean? Yeah. I, I I agree with that. Like I feel like there's a lot of lot that you can do outside of just looking like you stepped out of like a brand ad. The GLB, but even yeah. still, I feel like GLB back in the day did a lot more experimenting. Yeah. And now it's just very. You look like as let's like say uh, courting by numbers. Oh. Which is my favorite, just unintentional shade. The worst. I'm. Um, a basic person admittedly like i don't get very over the top ever like i just my brain can't do it so i get the basic but it is it is fun to break out of that brand aesthetic mm -hmm. we have a hot take here which is people need to refer to the golden age of gothic Lolita and do research which i both agree with and disagree with i think it's really fun to do research um and like know what your roots are and like know what the heck the fashion is about i don't necessarily think it's like necessary for just participating in the fashion like if you don't know everything there is to know like it's okay you don't have to you're participating in a fashion not like in academics do you know what i mean yeah and i think we as layers of it as part of the community like we get to shape it and we get to change it yeah i mean i do love i do love the history of it i do like you know love to like refer back to like old glbs and i think it's really good for research purposes especially when we are like, you know, for us, we present panels and like that kind of thing. Um, but so, you know, we have to kind of know what the heck we're talking about. Um, I don't know what the heck I'm if talking about. I've been if you're just wearing it for fun. And I'm just, just like, fun. <laughs> if you're wearing it for fun, and you just throw together an outfit and it's like kind of gothic and like kind of Lolita. Call it gothic Lolita. It's fine. Uh, square. Round. Triangle. <laughs> <laughs> Rectangle girls of the world. <laughs> Rhomboid. I, mean, I think I, I think it's I like it. Um, as somebody who 
joined not very long a million years ago um i feel like it's grown a lot more and because moitie came back which i yeah. took a sabbatical and i came back and i was like wait what you can't get moitie for like a hundred dollars after it's been a closet <laughs> child for a week anymore what um i think it's more accessible now it feels like uh i just always shop at alice and the pirates because it's here and i like a lot of the stuff that they come out with um but i feel like there's a lot more brands and brands are trying to appeal to western audiences this, this <laughs> is you people. this is you emma because it's, it's, it's Advil. <laughs> i mean i'm wearing like a black metal hoodie anyway um yeah i just feel like it's guess? really accessible because you could just buy things from japan and get it in and there's a lot of really good gothic stuff right now and i'm living for it as an emo kid from way back in the day spicy take from yeah. tina Montier in 2010 sweet anyway, girls on the uh, same Kat different side of the same that, i apologize oh, oh it's but the yeah boys. i think it's, it's the really fun like child. that nowadays in terms of what you can do with gothic world it's just a lot um there's a lot of different ways you can wear it Right, you can go like the super elegant, like streamlined, like traditional Gothic Lolita look. You can go like the super OTT. Like I feel like Gothic OTT had like a bit of a bit of a thing. Like a, it had a moment. It had a moment where everyone was just like, We're giant Hime goths now. Yeah. Oh, um I love it. Arrows Arrows having a thing, which come to my arrow panel, it is at eleven PM PST. Um and I did throw together the slides at 6 a.m. in the morning today, and then I went to sleep, but come hang out. <laughs> Love it. Love that minimal functioning on sleep. I love your friends. Um, what is your favorite accessory in terms of Gothic Lolita stuff? Um, and what is your least favorite accessory, actually? This feels like an icebreaker for a tea party. What's your least okay. favorite accessory and your most favorite accessory for your Our most favorite is harnesses. Like, that's an easy, easy answer. Like, anything PVC. <laughs> I yeah. think, I don't know, probably, like, chokers. <laughs> we just, like, tanned the same thing. It's kind of the same thing. <laughs> I feel like I don't have enough, but I have so many, and I'm always just, every time I'm getting dressed, I'm like, I don't know what to accessorize with. And I have, like, a pile, I think, forever ago when we did all that twinning look i sent a picture to our discord of just like 10 harnesses and, and like, i was like socks. how many dogs do you own <laughs> i own two cats so many body I chains see somebody, uh, just be completely extra and do a creepy a hot cord with just all those harnesses over something that would be don't really cute though anyway uh i don't have that kind of money so <laughs> her stuff is gorgeous yeah, body chains. Body chains would be fun. To actually bring them back the 90s mall goth, we should all just get the pocket chains yes. and just start wearing those. But that would be really difficult because you need like um like a more um you need like multiple petticoats to hold up hold up the um yeah. the weight of the chains. Just go to Home Depot and pick up some chains. You mean like you did for your Jacob Marley cord? I've had those chains. Like I just have those because big like, hats like, are a fucking vibe. They tell people stay away, but sometimes <laughs> people don't, and it's sad. Yeah, sun hats. I like. Sun so hats. I wear black lipstick is because I don't want people to like talk to me or look at me. Mm -hmm. They don't. It don't, don't you know, perceive me. Do not also, perceive me. Hats. It works on Bart. Emo wallet EGA <laughs> <laughs> with like a a gur Invader Zim. Just stick a worldwide mall goth Lolita meet. We we're did. We're gonna do that next. We're gonna do a mall goth Lolita meet. We're gonna go all hang up, hang out at Hot Topic after the pandemic's done. We did that picture with Emily. <laughs> Gothic culture is having chains lying around the house. Yeah. I yeah, true. like to have things readily available if I need That's, them for a shoot. So. That is exactly what Emma's room in Minecraft looks like. Oh yeah, she's got chains <laughs> hanging from the fucking ceiling. <laughs> it was a Roman Minecraft. Let's just look at that. It's, it's got a good little dungeon vibe. I don't know. There's a part in, in Hellraiser where Floral, the chains. Yeah. Floral brooches are a whole vibe. I haven't been able to find a good one. I'm on a hunt for one that I could put on my head and that I can wear on my boob if I needed to. Yeah, like so, it's just. I think um, Agato does like really big ones. Yeah, those are also really good just in general if you just want to accessorize. Mm -hmm, just like, anything. Um, just An OG outfit made of trip pants, please. 
with I with like the one. with the um the belt hanging from like the knees or whatever, like connecting your legs together. Ooh, jinko jeans. Like, oh, that would be uh, good. Dress. Lolita dress made out of a jinko jeans. Oh, 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 they got rid of belts for Final Fantasy. There's no more belts. What? Final How are they going to hold it together then? Don't need them anymore. Anyway, this isn't a Final Fantasy 14 panel. So it's just going to come running in here. But yeah. I love belts. I'm a belt person. Oh yeah, they're so much fun. Cut up the pants to make OG shorts and use the rest for a cape. And then you have like belts on the cape, which would be really cute. Maybe like chains to hold it together, like right here. Oh wait, here's an important question. <laughs> Why not sleep both? In the coffin or do you hang upside down from the ceiling like a bat? You hang your coffin from the ceiling upside down, and then you have to. You can't really spread out your arms because it's a coffin, but in order to make an inverted cross, you kind of have to do this. And that's the way you sleep. Like this. I like sleep upside down like a bat. <laughs> just like a mummy. Just a bat. <laughs> Oh no, my wife is serious. Do it. <laughs> Do it. I I'd be so happy if I saw that. That would just make my day. Oh. That's anyway, so I ran out of tea. I'm really sad, but I feel like I'm ready for my panel in two hours now. Um, I have a panel coming up in 30 minutes. You do, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> um that'll be fun. What's that panel about? Get everybody excited. Um, I'm going to be hosting, well, it's really just me. I'm going to be the moderator of a J Fashion Roundtable panel, which is kind of along the same lines of what I did with the International Lolita Roundtable um, panel. Uh, you get a bunch of people. Well, that one, I got a bunch of people from like all over the world. And we discussed like what it was like to be Lolita in different parts of the world. In this case, we are doing um, kind of a similar vibe where we get people from different fashion communities. Like we got Lolita's, we got Decora, we got like Gyaru, Mori. Um, and we're gonna talk about the similarities and differences of what it's like to participate in these different communities, the differences of what um, you experience like in public or like what your perception of, um, the perception of you like from family, like do, do people like certain ones better or not, that kind of thing. It'll be fun. It'll be a good time. I'm excited. And then I get to hiss at the camera with uh, Lacey Crown slash Emily Dogs while we paint our faces and glue things to them. Yeah. I haven't decided uh, how many things I'm gluing to my face yet, so we're going to see. It's going to be... Oh, Auntie Kuro, I think we are going to also address like kind of some cultural aspects of like wearing culture and stuff in like different J fashion. So that will be a fun time as well. Yeah. Um, anyone else have like gothic questions though? Yeah, we keep talking about that. Um, I am looking forward to the spooky room for the social mixer. Yeah, I mean, part to the social mixer. There's a spooky jealous. room. We'll just all um, what we're gonna do is we'll all stand up, right, and then we just do this. Good. The entire time. That's it. That's the spooky room. <laughs> the whole time. Gotta like hunch your shoulders forward and just. <laughs> oh. What a vibe. What a vibe. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You could just stare at the camera for the next 10 minutes. I was thinking that at some point I should do, like, when I'm finally unpacked, I should do, like, a wardrobe kind of, like, video tour. I would love to see that. <laughs> I have a question right here. Uh, when it comes to goth Lolita and accessories, is less more or is more more? And in it, my opinion, that entirely like depends that. on. Yeah, it depends on what you're going for. Um, you can do both. Both is yeah. Good. You can do both. Yeah, I struggle with this every day. Um, I feel like a lot of the times when I'm getting accessories, like you can't really go wrong with like most rings. I usually just, just get them all. Get rings on every finger, but like. With necklaces, you really have to see how it balances the whole outfit. Because mm -hmm. Lolita's, you're you got a big booty because you're wearing your petticoat or giant bustle, and or just kind of see how it life. if it's even kind of the top. So if you have a big booty, you can probably get away with wearing like a choker and like a corsage. And, and I've been loving like the rosary shape for throwing over like anything. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. But it depends on if you're going like a little bit more opulent, then you can layer a fuck ton of necklaces together. And that's like the look, out. you're like the most opulent. And if you're going for like the little bit more streamlined thing, you just chuck on like one necklace and you're fine. So it depends on like, the, it depends on the look. Mm -hmm. um, here's another one that says, are corsets an okay thing to wear? Um, if we're talking about like accessory, corsets as an accessory, I would say, um, some people have opinions about whether you should wear like a real corset over a cord because those are supposed to be like undergarments for um, like, like practical a, purposes. Like a trainer? Yeah, like those I don't think you should be wearing overclothes because they're not meant to be wearing wear, wear overclothes. You can, depends on what it is. But if it's depends on how good it looks, honestly. Yeah, yeah, depends on how good those, the, that's a very specific type of corset. If we're talking about just like decorative ones, um, you oh, can use those are totally fine and meant to be worn with gothic Lolita. I would count those as kind of one piece of accessory as instead of like a part of your coordinate too because depending on how plain or how like the abiotage one that was shown earlier is nice and simple however it does have curls at the bottom and it does add more so when I wear a cord with that it's kind of an accessory instead of just a part of the cord itself or the mm -hmm. yeah yeah this is a fun one because I have been looking so much into home decor because I have moved and now I am allowed, well, I'm not allowed to You're put allowed. more, we're not allowed to put more bats, but I have no, been looking at I'm bats. Mad. Okay, so in terms of home decor, I've been loving um, uh, WW Ceramics for, um, WW Weird and Wonderful Ceramics um, from the UK for like cool, spooky, like home goods, like plates and teapots and shit. Um, there is a Web Spy Cinderella if you want to get fancy and get yourself a nice, expensive, like, side table that's got a spider web on it. Um, uh, let's see. Sourpuss Clothing has pretty good, um, like, home goods stuff. You can always go to Killstar. I don't personally shop at Killstar a lot, but they do have a home goods section. Uh, Disturbia does as well, because I find it mm -hmm. kind of on the same level. I have a cute little, uh, mm -hmm. my little skull. What was, that, what was that brand that did like the skeleton lamps? Oh, uh, I was typing that in. That's Catacomb Culture. Uh, um, they do um, resin. I think it's resin of uh, uh, skulls, well, and they'll make it. Basically, it will make your house look like you're in Doom 2016. Oh so hell yeah! Like a lamp that just has a spine or a skull candle, and it's. They're expensive, but like if you if that's the look you're going for, I personally, want a skull or a skeleton lamp. That's just, what I want. You want to pretend like you're literally in hell. That's something you can do. Like, just, um, I got my bat shower curtain and apron from Sin and Linen. Mm, also, Sin and Linen, that's a good one. We didn't yeah. mention literally just go any home goods store during, during Halloween. Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's okay, where. So oops, wait, no, that's where my little crow came from. <laughs> I got him at Michael's. Here's the one I was talking about. It's from oh, the blackened that. teeth. Oof, God, and they also sell gorgeous. like baby head um, flower um, kind of yep. decorations. I have oh, a cool. Mask from them. That's very extra. But yeah. Oh, cat, cat Coven does really cute pillows. I have a Yeah, Cat Coven has the I cutest think. stuff. Oh, there's another one that I can't think of their name because they changed it. I feel like just go stalk any of our Instagrams because I occasionally will post things from my house. Mm -hmm. Oh, favorite. um, what's that one that does shelves? I have no idea, but I have them saved. Yeah, uh, it's called like death, like life after death designs or something. I forgot. Oh, that I sounds familiar. And um, oh, and antiquing. That's I have a lot of things that I have in specifically mirrors. Eventually, I'm gonna find a haunted mirror, and that's not what I'm looking forward to. But My desk is from a senator that died in a plane crash. <laughs> that's goth. It's really good. That's really good. <laughs> That's how I know you live in New England. I know. Well, so the desk is actually a senator from Minnesota, and then someone in Vermont ended up acquiring it. And then I got it off Craigslist. Mm. Oh, um, and Charlotte Clark Limited from the UK. They do really cute home goods as well. Oh, it's life after death designs. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah. Are. Uh, which senator? I don't remember, but he was with like the farmers power party or something like that like it was like a workers party but like specifically for farmers um and he died in like the 90s so this is an older an older desk i don't remember his name i'm sorry 
Um, yeah. Also, oh. just get a bunch of candles. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I have like a bunch of shit saved because this is what I've been like obsessing over in the last few weeks. Yep. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll post it to Discord. I think you're a bad influence on me. Jen doesn't let me decorate goth. My office. Is That's probably just the telltale sign that you're a goth is that your partner will not let you buy anything to decorate the house. <laughs> she let me buy the bat shower curtain because it's not black. It's like blue. It's like a light sky blue, and it goes with the bathroom. Anyway, we can also talk about. I saw a really good question. <laughs> Where do you place yourself on the Bauhaus to mom, um, Moidi, no, which is hilarious because both Emma and I listen to the same trash music and it's like ska. <laughs> we listen to ska. I'm like the worst goth in that. Yeah, I listen to ska. Neither of us listen to goth music. Listen we just to listen to ska. Guess accounts. But like, yeah, I don't listen to typical goth stuff. And I think the Smiths are fine but morrissey's a piece of shit so how about you sarah do you fall on the goth spectrum at all i like i definitely had my like baby bat phase in high school but now i'm like normal and normy in terms of like music <laughs> yeah i listen to like some like um cabaret like I love all this stuff. circus <laughs> punk that's it <laughs> like, my favorite shit in high school was um atreyu and their whole album about becoming a vampire like they had a whole oh my god, like, god. Wait, 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 wait. That, that was my thing oh, i was like <laughs> thank god we have another ska goth that's the ska thing, though. like i listen to a lot of music and so like i do listen to the typical goth music but also like i love ska at the we end of the love day Scott's network yeah it was guy. senator paul david yeah, that's him. That was him. Oh, that's Thank you, Daydream Carnival. <laughs> <laughs> I have his desk now. <laughs> it's perfect that Lily does like ska. <laughs> it just is chaotic. It is chaotic. I love ska. There's that time that you were at that, um, you like almost started like a fight, Emma. Oh, at the, oh. Um, <laughs> manifesto. At a, is that an Alkaline Trio show? Oh, was, was that it? Yeah, I still love them after i don't know 20 years of listening to them uh this dude punches spencer out of nowhere because i'm tiny most people who know me i'm under five feet and petite so like i am frail but I have, like, I'm from bones that are made of so, like, i will throw down if i have to throw down this dude just punches I'm spencer ready to out square up. and so i turn around and just see red and start <laughs> kicking this guy and that is, i he's he was a big bigger guy too so like I probably just should not have done that. I realized but he probably that. wasn't expecting like a no. tiny lady to come like fucking for his. Throat. I was wearing brand new docks too, and like when those aren't broken in, they're hard. And so I'm just wailing this dude in the shin. I'm just like, oh crap! I lost a nail with like a press on nail too, and I was so pissed <laughs> off about that. I was like, oh, no. uh, anyway, Spencer has a very punchable face, and it's been punched in the face. For <laughs> But only once was I with him and was able to defend him, so. Maybe he deserves it, I don't know. Just open his pit up. Just a few, just a few punches in the face as a treat. So yeah, take me with you if you guys need a ride or die. I'm a good ride or die. Yeah, absolutely. Um, gothic stuff. Uh, <laughs> quick fire question. Do you prefer bats or skulls? Bats. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> skulls bats bat skulls bat. bat skulls well bats i have a little bat on my desk I love bats. oh it's him him if you had a broth of goth claws would you feed it to a sloth or a moth i'd feed it to a moth i don't think a sloth would want to eat that I like sloths a lot. I like sloths. I, I do too. They're my fave. They don't eat cloth. We got someone here who prefers. Ghosts are good. Skeletons. Oh, team ghosts. Anyway, these are all really good words. So if you are going to our mixer, go to the spooky room because there will be a scribble game with those words in them. Yeah. You know what? No, I definitely prefer. I definitely prefer skulls. Thinking about my tattoo choices, I don't have any bats yet, but I do have. So many skeletons. That's valid. So now that so you've many. picked one, your objective now is you need to go and make a cord featuring that. 
Oh yeah, I'll, I'll use the, the skeleton that I inherited. If you would like to also borrow a uh, little Ernesto. Yeah, I'll borrow yeah. Ernesto. <laughs> I forgot about Ernesto. Where do I get my tattoos? Um, so I was getting them at Old Crow in Oakland, um, but they have since closed down. Um, my normal tattoo artist is Holy Baharati, um, and he's still working. Um, but I do also like follow a lot of different tattoo artists um, who are not from California, and I wait for them to travel to California, and then I book appointments with them because that's fun. So I have, a, I have a couple from like this guy who usually works out of Mexico City. I have one from like a guy who was just like traveling everywhere. Um, I've traveled to like Portland to get a tattoo. Bat chest piece. Ooh, seemed bad. Get it, get it. Oh yeah, Old Crow, um, all the artists. I don't know where they're working anymore. I think some of them went over to um, San Francisco. Like I think they're at um, Seventh Sun, um, but it, it I don't, I don't know what's gonna happen to tattooing after everything opens up. Like technically they can tattoo now, but. I regret not getting a tattoo before the pandemic. I was planning on getting one back in December and then just, whoops. Anyway, I think we're almost at time here. I think so, um, yeah. We're really supposed that's... to be 30 minutes, but <laughs> you can stick with We can talk about God's shit that. for, um, yeah. Remember when we used to joke about, hey, let's just make a panel of us talking? Our dream has come true. Our dream has come true. This is what it's like to be in a Discord call with the three of us. So, in case Yeah, if you're wondering what it's like, yeah, it's like it. Minecraft with us. This is it. <laughs> Minecraft. Yeah. Old pro artists are staying in the area. Good to know. I got to go get ready for my panel and put Me some too. Mine's in 15 minutes. Okay. So stick around <laughs> for Jess's panel and then stick around after that for my panel. It's going to be a rootin' tootin' good time. Love it. I'm excited. Don't forget yeah. to rootin' toot. Yeah, uh, don't forget to uh, do the charity thing. Vote yep. in the coordinate contest. Wow, y'all are stunning. I say this every time. It's just, I can't. I think we got more we got more um entries to this fashion walk than any other fashion walk. Like I I feel like combined at this point. Yeah. No, no, no. I think we we got a close number for Grammarly, but I think this number was actually maybe around 60 or 70. This one was 80, which was huh. It was, was like, like, yeah, over 80. Wow. And we got more than half of them in the last two days. Including mine. Including <laughs> I didn't do one this time. I was, I was very late. We were well, late. not late, but Oh, yeah. yeah. Thank that. you so much for joining us and um, sticking around while we talk about EGA and every other gothy thing under the sun. Every other gothy thing. Actually, being goths. Oops. I know we're bad goths. Sorry, I'm <laughs> All right, everyone. See you later. Thank Bye. you.